Uh, it's so great to have you here, Sen Senator Eldridge, for our event, Slashing Carbon, One Building at a Time, which is a collaboration between my real estate team, the Rethink 39 Group, and Citizens Climate Lobby, which is a huge grassroots advocacy, national um, uh, advocacy team that's promoting carbon pricing. And I know that you and Senator Barrett in Lexington have been, have been advancing legislation to look at carbon pricing in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Can you tell us a little bit about what carbon pricing actually means, what it means to consumers, to homeowners, to business owners here in the Commonwealth? Absolutely, and you know, Massachusetts has really led on, on the idea of carbon pricing for about the past six years, really due to Senator Barrett's leadership, and I've been happy to support him. And I think it's important to think about with carbon pricing is, you know, first of all, shifting behavior is that if, if uh, gas, gas prices are a little higher, getting people th to think about alternative ways of transportation and not using cars, but also to use that revenue to invest in more public transportation, um, I would say green building and doing everything possible to combat climate change. And so carbon pricing is a really a way to shift behavior but it's also a way to generate a source of revenue, something we really need to look at climate resiliency, combating climate change. And uh, I'm proud that in the Senate climate, uh, climate change bill, um, there is a, a form of carbon pricing, which Senator Barrett put into the bill. And we're hoping that will be in the final clean energy bill that the legislature is expected to vote on by the end of this session. That's great to hear, Senator Eldridge, that uh, Senator Barrett's bill is, it looks like it may have a pathway to move forward. I know that this session has been extended. Can you tell us about the kind of legislative framework? I know everything is a little different this year <laughs> with, with COVID. Uh, you know, we're doing this event as kind of an open house event and the real estate community is dealing with COVID as well and how we do things virtually rather than live. So tell us a little bit about the legislative session and where we are right now and how COVID has impacted that as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've all had to adjust to the pandemic, including the legislature. And so uh, in addition to remote voting and you know, remote debating, for the most part, uh, we have extended the session because uh, we're still debating the budget. And uh, so many of the bills uh, that we wanted to pass the session, first we had to get to the pandemic related legislation. So uh, the Senate and the House have passed uh, clean energy bills and that goes together into our conference committee. So there are House and Senate members that are, are negotiating that bill, including Senator Barrett. And so uh, between now and early January, we have a timeline to, to pass the bill. And so certainly urging people to contact their state representative and state senator uh, to urge them that the legislature needs to take up the clean energy bill. And also, of course, that it should include the carbon pricing provision that Senator Barrett uh, fought so hard for. That's fantastic. Thanks. The other really exciting thing and why I'm such a proud Massachusetts resident, Senator Eldridge, is Massachusetts has really been a leader in the nation to transitioning to a clean energy economy. And uh, now that it looks like we have a new president elect in front of us yeah. uh, that also understands the value of that, the value proposition of more jobs, of a cleaner environment and really tackling the climate crisis. Uh, can you just tell us a, a few words about where we stand in, in the advancement of a clean energy economy in here in Massachusetts? We've done so much, but as you know, there's still so much more to do. What are, what are your goals moving forward to, to advance the clean energy economy in Massachusetts? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we really began to lead the nation back in 2008 with the passage of the Global Warming Solutions Act and the Green Communities Act to move to, to really embrace that clean energy economy under Governor Patrick's leadership and a number of folks in the legislature. Uh, we've made a lot of progress. Um, I, I think that uh, there's been a bit of a slowdown around some uh, clean energy jobs, including in solar, uh, because some of the solar incentives have become a little more complicated, but the legislature continues to pass uh, legislation to create more incentives for the clean energy economy. Um, and we're certainly seeing offshore wind uh, really advance, which is really, really exciting. But the, the bill that we have before us is really critical around low income and community solar, making sure everyone benefits uh, from solar power. And uh, we are seeing uh, jobs increase across the state. We're getting back to that right now, um, despite, the, despite the pandemic. 
Yeah, my, my understanding was before we went into the pandemic, we had something like 110,000 clean energy jobs, which include, you know, renewables like solar and wind, but also energy efficiency jobs. And of course, you know, energy efficiency experts, building science experts getting into people's homes through the pandemic has been a challenge. So I, I'm sure that took a little bit of a hit, but I am very hopeful that it's it's such a job generator in, mm -hmm. in this state, right? That that we've get, we have such an opportunity to push this all forward. Absolutely, yeah, it's a job generator. And I think, you know, more and more now we're looking at it through an equity lens, making sure anyone, everyone benefits from solar power, from clean energy as well as the environmental justice lens uh, to make sure that those that are in rural communities or, or cities um, aren't left behind. It's so critical, absolutely. Senator Aldridge, I just, I just wanna say thank you for all the work that you've done. I'm one of your biggest fans uh, and uh, I, I just am so thankful that we have forward thinking legislators like you really advancing the state. Thank you so much for helping us with this event. Great, thanks so much, Craig. And I'm looking forward to the attending the event on the 16th. Very good, thanks.